Yes, guys, I'm Sai. Welcome to Cardiff City World. This is your uh, Swansea versus Cardiff, South Wales derby, match reaction. Nice and early. It's the breakfast show, baby. Let's talk about some stuff. It's going to be... Uh, It'll be interesting. And don't forget, 8 o'clock tonight, I'll be doing five things we learned about Cardiff City versus Swansea, which is going to be so much fun. But um, <laughs> I am delighted to be joined by the, one of the co-hosts of the Flower Hour. It is none of them. It's big Matty Angel. How are you, my friend? Yeah, good, but a little bit tired. As you can probably see, some of the bags are still under my eyes for a Sunday morning. But, uh, yeah, kind of w waking up this morning and then this... Was all, but it was all a bit of a dream in the game was today, but uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't to be, was it? Still annoyed, still can't just frustrated. Another that. weekend, mate. Yeah, just frustrated, really. I kind of like all the hard work over the last four or five weeks. I know it is not really undone, but it kind of goes out the window, doesn't it? When you have a result like that, like we had yesterday, yeah, very From frustrating, very frustrating, mate, because it felt yeah. like we it felt like very avoidable in some some aspects um and i there's two things i don't really buy into which i see a lot of on social media is one it was the ref's fault i don't necessarily buy into that because because yes there's some decisions which we'll talk about but also i think we were that poor or they had that many chances that it could have been it could have been pain like it could have been embarrassing in that first half um, and also, I don't necessarily think it's on the manager. I think, again, we'll discuss now, like there is a couple of things which maybe you can look at. But ultimately, I think it's down to the players, mate. I think the players have got to, once they go over that white line, their in desire, intensity, attitude, work rate, um, quality, like the manager can't control that. Yeah. I think there was a few players yesterday who just didn't rise to the occasion. There was... Um, I think you mentioned briefly just before we came on live that you know there was there was far too many people or players then like rabbits and headlights on it. Yeah, like I thought um, Wilson Espran in particular looked like the occasion got to him in the first half. He just you know, and he's young, mate. I get it, and maybe that was where the manager could have said, right, it's a big game. Let's get Collins in there, a bit more experience and and whatnot. But but Wilson Espran has been that good. That yeah. You can understand why he played. So yeah. I want to start off, mate, with the starting lineup. So <clears throat> I saw a lot of people, me myself included, in my preview. I said I thought he'd go with the sort of same lineup. I said that I wouldn't have. I would have started Colwell. I would have probably brought in Rawls, but Anno Dowda. But I fully understood, like Wintle's been that good in the last couple of games that it does feel harsh to drop him. However, you've got to look at. What's this game going to be like? What do we need from the game? And what we needed was hard-working wingers who were going to get forward but also get back. We needed someone in the middle next to the office who can hold on to the ball and, and keep hold and look after it. And we needed a bit of creativity and a bit of magic. And I felt like that starting 11, you know bowlers are not going to work back and we pay for it with a goal. You know... Yeah. Wintle's got all the energy in the world, but sometimes he gets caught out of position chasing the ball. His passing is a bit hit and miss in terms of like progressing it through the lines and things like that. And you then, say about the passing there, then just Wintle. I think passing in general yesterday was shocking. Absolutely unbelievable, mate. When you think back, right? Oh, let me finish my point. I'm just yeah, on that sorry. on the start. No, no, on the starting lineup, right? So a lot of people saying, you know, he picked the same starting lineup against Ipswich. Great. But against Ipswich, the starting lineup wasn't the lineup which caused Ipswich a load of issues at the end of the game and created a lot of chances and put them under pressure. That wasn't the lineup which did the damage. Now, I know we played well throughout that game, but it wasn't that starting lineup which really broke through. It was the, the Colwells, the O'Dowders, the Jesus who actually did the damage. Um, but I get it. And I, I I understood everything the manager did with the starting lineup, even if I didn't agree. I I, I understood why it was the same. Yeah, yeah. But we, like you said, made the passing and the and the ability to keep the football was dreadful. Like what we've done so well all season, even when we had that rough spell, was we were good at keeping the ball 
and what we needed yesterday after that you, you it was like we talked about it all week last week mate was get through the first 20 minutes and then just get hold of the ball keep it and quieten the crowd down and what we did when we ended through that terrible run is we just went sideways 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 backwards and that's what we needed a little bit of after that initial 20 minutes and we we just kept giving it away and all they did um i'll stop talking now mate. all they did is yeah, like they, they didn't even they in the first half they pressed really high up yeah. but after that 20 minutes they sort of half pressed kept their shape waited for us to go back to the keeper or not have a ball on and then we would just go long and they'd win it back every time yeah. and it was embarrassing that we didn't adapt and we did a passing we just couldn't hold the ball mate it was poor no no disappointing i think whole the, the way he started the game he was a bit nervy a couple of his clearances well the first half i don't think he he found a Cardiff city player did he i think it was, no it's um and that's one of the things i think he's a good keeper don't get me wrong um and, you know what you've done previously is thing but I think we've got to stop looking at that and thinking like you're now. We, do you know what I mean? You can't you can't keep going back to the past. And yeah, he was good for Luke Dunn. It's, it's the euro now, and I just I don't think his distribution is is where it needs to be. Um, I think he struggles at times, but it's weird, isn't it? Though because his distribution is one of his strengths, or has been one of his strengths, and now he just it looks awful, or certainly it doesn't look as good as it has been. But I don't, yeah. although. If you had said to me at the start of the season that we were going to pick Alnwick because he's better with distribution, I'd have laughed at you because I thought that was one of the weaknesses in his game. But actually, if you go on this season, Alnwick's distribution, I think there was one game, Norwich maybe, where it was really poor. But no, 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 you didn't play against Norwich, did he? That was Runson. Yeah, so Alnwick has been really good with his distribution. And I think if he wasn't for his injury, he probably would have kept his spell space for a couple of games at least. But yeah. That's another weird one, though, isn't it? I'm, I'm wondering if it's more things going on behind the scenes with his injury, really. It's, it just doesn't sit right. I know he had issues and he was dropped for runners in at the earlier in the season, but I don't know. I haven't heard much about his, his injury, to be honest. I don't know if you've heard any different. or No, he's, he's supposed to be. I heard he was back a couple of weeks ago, but he hasn't been yeah, on the bench. So. You haven't been in any of the squads, have you? But I'm just I wondering... Think, Sorry, mate. I was going to say the other thing. The, the, one of the important things to say as well, right, is it's a South Wales derby. It's painful. Blah blah blah. It's ultimately, mate, is Swansea with a better team. Yeah, they, was, they they wanted it more. They played better, and even with shit finishing, they still won comfortably. And I think yeah. even with Car I thought Cardiff were marginally better in the second half. But they weren't that much better. Like they weren't so much better in the second half that you were like, "Oh, that's a missed opportunity." Like we were poor. We created nothing, but we just couldn't hold the ball. And um, Joe Rawls not getting on the pitch is a weird one to me, because I don't know if he's carrying an injury or maybe like a bit of an injury because he obviously didn't start against Ipswich, and I assumed he didn't start against Ipswich because he was being rested for the Jacks game, mm -hmm. and then. Like bringing on Ramsey, who has struggled in that deep midfield role for Wales because there's younger players in the midfield. And, and Swansea had so much energy in the midfield that it was weird to me to see Ramsey come on in that deep position because he, one, he struggled in recent years playing deep. And two, there's no way he's 100% fit because on TV last week, he said he was very unlikely to make the bench. So. Yeah. They've obviously, there's something's happened with him over this last week. He's in the Wales squad. He's suddenly on the bench. I'm not saying he's not fit. You know, he's, he's probably just nearly there. But it was weird to me to bring him on. Yeah. It, where he didn't look, him he, on. He didn't look at the races for me yesterday, though, no. which is understandable. But I don't know what you thought when he came on, but I just didn't think. He, he, gave, he gave the ball away a lot. He gave, he gave a couple of silly fouls away around the box. Because he's he wasn't either he's not fit enough or he just hasn't got the legs there now. Um, like for me, he's got to be if he's going to play, he's got to play in that sort of number ten role, or he's got to have two other midfielders who are going to be the legs for him. Because it, it's just a fact of life, mate. When you get older, you haven't got that pace, and you look at what Joe Allen, what Swansea do with Joe Allen. Joe Allen sits, 
does his job and the two with him do all the running. Yeah. And then, and one of the fullbacks will slot in as well. So he's never isolated on his own and he's never, or certainly in the game against us, he was never on his own versus, um, who was it before Colwell come on? We played number 10. Um, Turnbull. I thought Turnbull was quite unlucky to come off, mate. Like, when I was looking at it, like, we were talking and we said, like, you've got to get Mate off. And look, Again, on the manager, mate, people moaning about a manager. Everyone's been crying out for Grant through the middle. The manager does that. He brings a doubter on the left. I think most people, like me and you, were talking and saying, you've got to get Mate off. I'd rather see Grant in the middle with O'Dowder on the left. He did that. Then he brought Caldwell on. Like he's, or he did brought Caldwell on at the same time. And it's like, he did. Apart from, the only one I'd question is probably the Ramsey one. Yeah. In terms of his subs. Like, I felt like, when he brought Ramsey on, that probably should have been roles for Wintle. But, you know, it's it's frustrating, mate, because everything we did well in the first game and everything we've done well all season, we kind of just abandoned that. We looked like a team which plays long ball football yesterday. Yeah. And it yeah. was so so strange. I would have I would have liked to have seen roles in there from the start, to be honest, instead of Wintle, and just because of his... Just because of his experience and probably what it'll, it'll mean to to Rolsey, because obviously he's been, you know, he's part of the furniture now, and he. Um, I just think that bit of experience, perhaps as well, would have added a bit as well. And you know, there were certain things during the first half that West, you know, and fair play to Swansea, they got under our skins. Mate, they, that incident we'll talk about now in a minute with our darling. You know, if it was the other way around, we would have been shouting and screaming for him to get sent off. Um, I don't agree with what he'd done at all, but it worked for Swansea. Um, and Mate Day didn't look the player that, you know, he potentially can be yesterday. I think that got under his skin. He was lucky, really, to stay on the field, if I'm honest, because he could have had another yellow card quite easily when he uh, rugby tackled somebody going past him. But... Um, yeah, I think Swansea would have just a bit more streetwise then, sh shall I say. Yeah, like Harry Darling, like, look, as Cardiff fans, we all fucking hate him. He, he was an absolute shit out yesterday. Like, some of the stuff he was doing, the diving and the and the forearm to the face. But it's what you've got to do in a derby. You wind players up. And you could tell from quite early on that Swansea were trying to get someone sent off, like with what happened with Robinson. And Cardiff fell for it. So it's yeah. own, like stupid. Mate, it was very lucky to stay on the pitch. You, you know, everybody and their dog knows you can't put your forehead into someone's face. No matter if it's like you just touch foreheads, like you know that you run the risk of being sent off. However, in that incident, I think if there's VAR, they both go because um, the reason he's so angry, um, Mate, is because he gets a forearm to the face. And yeah. actually, when you look at it, if you compare the two into like the two things. The forearm to the face is much more violent. It's not violent, but you know what I mean. It's much more aggressive. So I think with VAR, they probably both go. Yeah. But you know, without VAR, I thought the referee to that point did well. And then after that, I thought he went a bit downhill. I didn't think he was terrible, terrible, but I thought anything which was like 50 50 or dubious or not, you know, it could go either way. He just gave it Swansea's way, almost like. He felt like probably he should have sent him off, but he didn't because of the. I'm, lucky, I'm glad he didn't, obviously. Um, and then, but then Darling kept he kept going. He was winding up Mate, and Mate's got to be cleverer. He's got to laugh it off, and he's got to know that's what they're doing. But like you say, Joe Rawls being in there from the start, I think that helps. Like I had said in my preview, my team would have been I would have played Colwell off the right with Turnbull in the middle and and O'Dowder on the left and Grant through the middle because I would have tried to basically my thinking was it like I would imagine United might do it today actually against Liverpool is when they play like a big team where they need a bit of control of the midfield they'll play Bruno Fernandes on the right and he'll tuck in but the difference with him and Colwell is Colwell's got that bit of pace and if you get him on the ball he can play off the wide but he can also drop in and in terms of the goal mate so let's talk about that. The goal comes, it comes across, NG goes down. But before we get to that point, what irritated me more than the foul is 
Josh Bowler stood just sort of 30 yards out watching as Perry NG is two on. He's got two defend two strikers to mark Perry NG as. And if he stays with his man, who's the wide man, the man in the middle's free. So he's got he has to go in on that man. Yeah. And the Swansea striker is very clever. He pins him, holds him, and he's pretty it's one of them where if it's anywhere else on the pitch, it's probably a foul. But for some reason, he doesn't give it. Now, I didn't have too much of an issue with it not being a foul until he gives the penalty. Now, yeah. if you're if you're not going to give that one as a foul, I don't think you can give the penalty because they're quite similar. And um, <clears throat> But anyway, like Bowler, for me, if that happens on the right-hand side, on the other side, Grant is in there marking that man or at least putting him under pressure to try and put him off balance and it's a great finish but it's a great finish because he's able to watch it he's got no yeah. one like no pressure on his neck, so he can get his technique right and he can just cushion it into the corner and the keeper's got no play no chance and bowlers stood 25 30 yards out just with his, like and it's like fuck's sake mate like that's your man so yeah. why you stood there with your arms out wide and I, that annoyed me more than the foul why I do think it was probably a foul, but the Swansea striker has been very, very clever because he made it. NG just can't, it's got nowhere to go. Um, and then you have the penalty. And I think the penalty is one of them again, where like, I don't think it's a penalty, but if you pull a shirt like that, when the ref's got a good view of it, you run the risk. But if that's, a, if that's a penalty, then the first one's a foul, if that yeah. makes sense. And then there was a couple like later on where NG's getting his shirt like ripped off his back off set pieces. Ironically, that was the only thing which Aaron Ramsey did do well, which was his, his set piece delivery was very good. Um yeah, it's just, been, it's just you just need the ref, you just want the referee to be consistent in that and you know that level is a is a it is a free for all sometimes, like you were saying about um NG getting his shirt pulled. I just, how do we, how do they stamp that out of the game? Because you see it, and I just don't know how they do it, really. But, um, yeah, like you said, you could have had his shirt ripped off him. Like, but but it's weird, isn't it? Because it's like, as fans, we probably don't want to see them given because otherwise you're literally going to end up having a penalty every quarter like, or every free kick. But yeah. also, it's infuriating when you have someone like, say, NG or whoever going for a ball and it looks like they're going to get the header to have a shot on goal and they're getting pulled to the floor and the ref's like, oh, no, it's six yeah. of one, half a dozen in the other. You just won that consistency. But it made, we didn't deserve anything from that game. I thought I thought Mate lost his head. He had to go off. I thought Bowler was bordering on a fucking disgrace. I really was... I was so he's he's, he's done that a couple of times now where he hasn't tracked back to support defence um, over the season. I mean, and I just don't understand the the manager's thinking in starting him all the time. Um, How can you start him over Colwell, mate? From an attitude point of view, from a quality point of view, from like every possible attribute that you would look at, I think Colwell offers you more, even though it's not Colwell's yeah. best position playing off the right. Or well, even Tanner, when Tanner come on, I don't know what you thought of Tanner when he came on. I know he haven't again, he haven't played much. Like, but the thing with my Go on. You go, I go, go, go. prefer to have Tanner there if you if you had to him or Bowler. I prefer to have Tanner there. Yeah, mate. I'd rather have Grant on the right and Bowler on the left. If anything, yeah. like, if you're going to play Bowler. But with my my problem with Tanner is he wants too much time on the ball. Yeah. But if you go back to Colwell early doors, not so much this season, but like previous seasons, that was something which he had in his game. He wanted like lots of, and I don't mean trying to beat the extra man because I think Colwell can do that sometimes but like I mean wants too many touches of it and just yeah. holds it that bit too long and um <clears throat> yeah there was a couple of times Tanner could have played like a little ball to the side or through and he held it and held it and then ended up either losing it or or getting caught up and I, I get it like he's trying to make an impact and he like when he comes on in his head he's dreaming of I'm gonna do it again you know I'm yeah. gonna do something magic and there was one where he gets uh, Colwell plays a lovely ball through, and he did that a few times. Colwell, in fairness, Tanner's on the right, and it's perfectly like in front of him. He's got to run onto it, and he's, you're just thinking, 
cross it first time and Jeju was there in the middle ahead of the defenders onside like just play it across and he cuts it back to Colwell yeah. and it's like if Colwell scores it's oh what a clever pass that is yeah. but like you got to play the, you got to play the averages and you got to make the right yeah. decisions and I think and I think that comes down to him obviously not playing regular. And yeah, he's just something well, I just wanted to just touch upon now with obviously Bowler being on loan. And obviously, I'd be fairly surprised if he's in a Cardiff shirt next year. I'd be very, very surprised. But I just play Tanner now for the last seven, eight games or whatever it is. He's our player. He's going to be there next year. He needs time. He needs games to develop. We're mathematically pretty much safe, and we so just let him play. Work yeah, with him through the week, tell you know, work on his strengths, work on his weaknesses, but just give him football, let him play football. Um, bowler's not going to be there next year, so why are we still playing him? Yeah, especially now, like the playoffs are pretty gone and we're safe. Like, to me, I'd be looking at it and I, like you look at the improvements Colwell's made this year from playing, like Colwell's literally our best player, mate, at the moment. Like, yeah. And it's been like that probably for at least what two months. He's the one who looks like doing something. He's not a finished article, and his sometimes his decision making isn't all the best, or he doesn't he gets a bit um like snatches at shots and stuff, but that comes with experience a little bit as well. But like for me, Tanner, I agree with you, would benefit from playing, you know, eight games or whatever it is, or seven games. Um so what I would do if I'm the manager now is I'm going through the squad and I'm looking, right, who's going to be here next year? So if you look at it, I think, look, Phillips, as much as we'd love to keep him, I think it's unlikely that he stays. However, I think there's like a, a slight chance because he's out of contract. If they can work something out with his wages, he might stay because he's been that good, although he was poor yesterday. But I think generally speaking, he's been so good that if you can work something out with his wages, he, there's a chance he yeah, stays. Yeah. And McGuinness is still out. McGuinness is still out anyway. So you don't want to be moving NG in the middle or whatever. So, you know, Phillips going to play. Wilson S. Brand is an interesting one because <clears throat> if you said to me now, like he'll sign a contract, it won't cost us the arm and a leg. I think I would probably say yeah go on do it if there's like if he's on big wages or he's going to cost anything i'm not, not so sure mate um because i think you've got collins joe bagan has done all right on his loan i also you know you've got romeo like wilson s brand hasn't been so good that yeah. i'm like yeah definitely sign him however I do lean more towards trying to get him at least again, maybe on another loan for maybe a season loan. Yes, I suppose he's being smart in the sense that if you know if we if we're going to sign him, that's obviously taking money and um, thing away from strengthening elsewhere. I suppose is 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 weighing up the pros and cons of yes, we've got Jamalu Collins, Began coming back. Do we need an, a third one? To go there, or do he's we need big. to spread him in Comes. the departments? Which, in, if I'm honest, we probably do. Yeah, I mean, and it, some of it will come down to is Bacon good enough to to challenge Collins? So you've yeah, got that, two, okay, two I suppose, left backs, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the manager's thoughts are because obviously he was shipped out on loan before, or as the manager came in then when he, but just before he went out on loan, he signed a three year contract, didn't he? Yeah. So. Do you know, there's one thing which I think could change that is when McGuinness is fit. Assuming McGuinness and NG stay in the summer and they don't get sold, if Phillips does come in, I think we'll we'll switch to three five two or five three two next year. I think we see yeah. Phillips, Phillips and McGuinness be the ball playing centre backs, with Gutas being the more sort of pressing and attacking, you know, go for the ball and that. And I think Dale plays a three. NG can play sort of on the right, left then. Wilson S. Brand suddenly then does become more of a an option. But I think O'Dowd does that job very well. And I think actually, because I know people at the club really like O'Dowd as a left back, whereas the fans like him as a left winger. 
So if they did make that switch next year, just sort of three five two, O'Dowda can go on the left wing, left wing back. But just going back to the squad, obviously Rolls has signed a new contract. Um, Siopas is permanent, right? Turnbull's permanent, fine. And then Bowler, mate, like I agree, I really agree with you, mate. Like I would rather see, I'd rather see Ashford, uh, Ashford get a goal on the wing, and like I know that's not his position, but it's not like an out and out winger, is it? It's more of a, a right forward. To be honest with you, mate. Part of me would like to see us go with Ashford up front with and almost go like 4 4 2, but either Ashford up front with Colwell as like a second deep striker, like number 10, basically. So you've got his physicality close to the striker, or even Jeju. But then again, is Jeju going to be here next year? Probably not. So why would you play him over a Tete or like a Tete is another one when he's fit now. I know people are mixed on him, but if he gets four or five games now at the end of a season and he stays fit, let's see if he's good enough because Jeju is not going to be here next year. No. Mate, we know what Mate is about. Um, Joel Colwell, do you think we see him now? I think we'll see him off the bench in the next couple of games, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just one for playing and just looking ahead now and building for next year you know um and if that means you know start starting some of the youngsters to give them more experience don't get me wrong i know they've been in and around the squad and obviously they train with the squad and things so that experience will be invaluable but you, you know you know the experience they'll get from playing you know i don't know 30 minutes against blinking middlesbrough or sunderland um it's going to be a lot better than you know playing for the the 21s and not knocking what the 21s do but for the, yeah, for the it's just different mate it? it's for the boys right? development and you know if the manager has got aspirations of using them next year then let's let's get them in there let's see to be it's honest I, I think I, I think they would have probably done a better job than most of the boys yesterday to be fair well at least they'd have cared mate or they'd have had the desire to and that's that's why I'm disappointed. Rolls didn't start because if it, if it makes sense today, I don't know. Yeah, you just want the you just want the it just looked yesterday. That's ones he wanted it more than us. And I just think if we'd had Rollsy in the middle, I think it might have made a difference. Like, but hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yeah, of course. And I and like at the end of the day, at the start of the game, everyone was praising the manager for picking that team, and that's what you got to remember. Um, but as I said at the start of it, when I did the preview, um, as you know, I did say that I wouldn't start that team for, and I went through you know various tactical reasons, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like that was kind of not justified. I don't know what the word is, but like, like what, what I said would play out, kind of played out a little bit. But, um, and do you know what was frustrating, mate, as well, is without Kabanga, Swansea had no pace up front. And we just did not put him under pressure, mate. There was one point, or actually, no, there was several points through the second half where Colwell's pressing on his own. And all of the other forward players have just stood like 20 yards away. And it's like, to me, that's got to be an instruction for them, for us not to press because our pressing was so non-existent for the whole game. That has to be a, a tactic from the coaches to yeah. sit in. It has to be, mate. Because otherwise, surely the manager and the coaches would be screaming at the players, why aren't you pressing? Why aren't you doing this? And it makes no sense to me, mate, because as soon as I saw Cabango was out, I was like, hello. Because we've got, we had, you know, you had Grant, Turnbull, um, Bowler and Mate, all in relatively decent form, with the exception of Bowler, but he's got pace and he's direct. So you're thinking, right, if we press them, they're not very confident. Like, we never... We never put them under pressure because even and, and then one or two times where we did press them they lost the ball and it was like what are we what are we doing why are we just letting them play out constantly and yeah. that, to me it had to be a tactic had to be a tactic because it doesn't make any sense like them they would have changed it you know it just didn't make any sense to me at all um talk to me about Corwell, mate. like i know it was a shit game 
but to me, like he was the only one. You said I was shining light at the moment, and he's just he can do little bits of magic. I think there was one ball yesterday on the. He was on the right hand side of midfield, I think, and he was playing it out of defence. And he kind of went for the ball, but let it go past him, mm. and he turned quickly and beat the player type of thing. And it's just little things like that. I think he's got something special. Um, but with the way he rot- rotates the squad, he kind of he'll play well, or you'll start the game and he'll play well, and then the next game and he's on the bench. And I just think, what what's that doing to him? Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. Talk about. Um, you know, mental. Health. No, I'm not saying this. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Like, you know, the mental, the mental side of it, like motivation. Yeah, because obviously, you know, it's a demanding game. I know they get paid well for it and stuff. But what? And he's a young lad. But um, you know, what's that? What's that doing to his confidence? Me thinking, well, I had a storm out last week, and now I'm on the bench this week. Like, it's. Mm. Um, and the weird thing is, every time he gets a bit of momentum, or every time he has like that exceptional game. He seems to not play the next game. Yeah, and so, it's, that's happened a few times. And like there was um, a couple of balls he played in down the right wing, which were really good. There was one where he did like a little, like sort of turn or whatever, drag back. I've forgotten what it's called, but like the rotation around the player, and then he tries to play Grant in with the outside of his butt, uh, boot, and the the left sided Swansea centre back just gets like a stud to it, and. That combination between Grant and Colwell, I would like to see. Like, if we're going to try and sign Grant in the summer, which I've heard is a possibility, I would like to see him play through the middle for the rest of the season with Colwell behind him and then bring on Ashford with, like, 30 minutes to go for Grant to give Grant a break and just to see, right, that's what, how would we look if we didn't play a target man? Because I insist, and I've said this probably for the last three, four months, if you play Colwell as 10, or if you play 3-5-2 or 4-4-2, and he's like the second striker, like a deep striker, like Dwight York or something like that, that sort of position, you can get away with playing a smaller striker who runs in behind because Colwell's so big. Like, he's such such a different style and physique to a normal number 10 like your david silvers and your bruno fernandez and all these guys they're all small i just want to go back to the point then when you mentioned dwight york bloody hell back you went into the dug deep into the archives there to pull our name out of the act yeah well oh teddy showing i'm like you know like that sort of second yeah, yeah, yeah. deep striker like yeah. I, it's not that different it's basically a number 10 isn't it but like you could if you did switch to a, a three five two next year or or even if you play four four two you can still have that sort of striker or number 10 who drops in the pockets which he does really well but he's also close enough to the striker that if you do need to go a bit more direct not long like yesterday but like a direct pass like into a chest Colwell can do that his first touch is very very good Grant can run off him he's filled out just... a lot as well as sure haven't he? he's he yeah, a lot at the moment he's the only thing which is like like in the last 24 hours he's the only thing which is like i'm like there's some positive because yeah. i look around mate i thought perry was like perry ng for me is the best right back in the in the championship um it's not even close but he was poor yesterday yeah but then everybody was poor i think yeah. odauda was all right i thought odauda like at least steadied the flow of attacks down our left hand side or our left hand side um and I thought Colwell was good. The rest, I thought, were average to shite, to be honest. And and unfortunately, that includes Aaron Ramsey as well. But I think it was unfair for her to put on a not fit Ramsey and expect him to do anything. I thought that yeah. was the one mistake the manager made. Do you know, seen some stuff on social media, like obviously, um, one of the big Cardiff accounts tweeted on Twitter um, said that Ruben Colwell should be speaking to his agent. And if this, if this manager is staying, he should be looking for a move, which I thought was uh, a bit of a take. Um, I disagree, but because I do think there's an element that Colwell does need managing a little bit because he does seem to tire. And I wonder whether that is partially due to his physique. But I also think the manager, like you said, 
is overdoing that. Like, I don't see a problem with him coming off if we're winning or... But I think he should... Like, when you think of the first names on a team sheet, mate, right? What names do you think of? Like, if you go, just say, like, the spine of the team or, or like, the first sort of three or four names on the team sheet for you, if you're picking the team, generally speaking, if everyone's fit. Yeah, well, at the moment, I think the last... I don't know how many games. I think our back five has picked itself, haven't it? So I think like when we've done the shows previously, you know, I think we've said like the back five stays as the back five. There's n- no discussion around it. I think the only potential one then is Esperon or, or Collins. But for the last three or four games, whatever has been has been Esperon. Um, a CO for his work rate probably. Um, and then you just don't know then, do you? Was, no. You can pick who you would think should be there, but whether or not the manager goes ahead and does that then is you just don't know. Like for me, if Ramsey's not fit, Colwell should be one of those first names on a team sheet. Yeah, I agree. And I hope but going I- forward now for the last few games, then, you know, that's the case. I think it's just manager. You know, he's so enthusiastic and he does a lot of running. And, you know, you've got all these things now with these GPRS or whatever it is called, these trackers and that. Is he doing too much running? Is he doing too much work for other people? Like you said yesterday about him pressing and he's the only one doing it. 100%. Have, we so got to be, have they got to be sitting down with him and saying, look, you're doing too much, if you can do too much? It's mm. well, um, example I would use, mate, right, it's... Um, it's a bit of a random one, but my son plays the same position, like number 10s, basically. Um, and earlier in the season, his coach pulled him aside because he's the same. He just works and runs and he covers like miles and miles in a game. When the manager said to him, like, well, you're like, you're doing your best for the team. You're, you know, you're doing wicked, but you'll, you do your most damage around the edge of the box in the, in the opponent's half and you get it and you can score from 30 yards or you can set, set people up or whatever. But we don't want you receiving the ball off the centre back in your own half. And yeah. Colwell was having to do that again yesterday. And this has been a problem which we've discussed many times. When Wintle plays with Cyopis, or Wintle is the yeah, when Wintle plays with Cyopis, we don't have a midfielder to progress the ball to the wingers, to, to Colwell, to whoever. So yeah. Colwell, because he doesn't get a ball, he comes deeper. And deeper and deeper and a couple of times he's getting off the centre back and you know he beats the man and does a good pass but you're like yes it looked good and it, yes it was good but it's like we don't we want you doing that 30 40 yards up the pitch yeah and that's why i think rules should have played because we had no one to progress the ball to our players but mid i think in many ways Outside of probably Colwell and O'Dowder, it didn't matter what combination of players you played yesterday, they weren't up for it. Now, you can leave out the players like Rawls who didn't play, but the players who got on the pitch, bar the two I mentioned, I thought their desire and attitude, it just wasn't where it should be. Now, there's maybe a few reasons for that. You could say the occasion got to them, the atmosphere, whatever. Maybe they got caught up in it. But tactically, we were very naive. Like I've, we haven't played long ball like that since probably Russell Slade was the manager. Like we were just lumping it forward to no one. And we were lumping it forward, and then it was just like they were winning it back all the time. Like I said, we were yeah. lumping it forward. We weren't getting anything from it, and we were just giving the ball back straight to them all the time. That's what it looked like, and that's what it felt like to me. Is and we didn't adapt, the ball did we? forward. You may as well have just passed it straight to him. Yeah. We didn't adapt, though, did we? Like, once that didn't work, we didn't go, right, we need to get a foot on the ball. And then, what made me laugh, with two minutes to go, with like 88 minutes, we start knocking it about across the back line and starting to, like, patiently pass it. And you're like, yeah, now we need to lump it in the box. Yeah. It's just, uh, it was infuriating, mate. Um, I would like to see Turnbull alongside Cyopis as the two. Like, that is the pairing I would like to see before this bloody season finishes. 
because as you know, when he came in Turnbull, I was super excited to see that as a pair because I think that the, I thought that their abilities, their their personalities, they kind of complement each other. So I, unless it's like, I don't know, mate, like same, like do you play it? Do you do that now, or do you give Joel Colwell a go? But if you play Joel Colwell, I think you have to have somebody with experience. You have to have rules in there because I think I'm not sure what Cyopus's English is like. So he was he's very experienced and he's a good player. Can he talk him through it? Yeah. I'm not sure if he can. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing him a disservice there. I don't know. So and then is Joel Colwell and Rawls as a midfield, is that enough in the championship? Like unless you play Joel further forward in that sort of number ten position. But then I suppose you could if you had his brother in there with him, like if Ruben's number ten and Joel's in there with Cyprus. I suppose you've got your brother there to talk you through it. But I just I would like to see Joel Corwell and I would like to see Ashford get some minutes. I don't think we see him start in maybe until the last game. Last home game of the season, they may get a yeah. start. Rather, but, um, rather, it's than, oh, say rather on the way's the last game of the season, isn't it? Yeah. Here's a question for you though, mate, right? If you look at our bench yesterday, right? Um Obviously, Robinson didn't make the bench, which is a very shocking, I know. Um, so our bench was Romeo Rolls, Ramsey O'Dowder, Collins, Jeju, uh, Ruben, Tanner, and then the keeper. Like, so Joe Cowell and Ashford were not even on the bench now because Ramsey's back. So if you're saying you want to see some of them get minutes, someone's got to be dropped from a squad. So are you saying... Bowler should be dropped not just to the bench but to the out of the squad to allow the youngsters to get some minutes. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. Well, would you? Was that mean you drop Jay? So would you? Would you drop Bowler in terms of from the squad? Would you drop Bowler for Joel Colwell and Jeju for Ashford because they're not going to be here this next season? Yeah. Assuming yeah, you know, have... Ram, Ramsey's fit and and whatnot. What about yeah, Robinson, I, wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have no qualms about that again. I suppose it's, it depends on the fixture and who you're playing and what their strengths and weaknesses are. So I suppose, you know, there's people in the club with jobs who will analyze that type of thing. So I think is, I, th- I suppose certain games, you've got to have certain people on the bench. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, I, I'm all for now building for next year. <laughs> Getting the boys' minutes, we're gonna be in the club next year, and if that means sacrificing some of the names that were not gonna be here next year, then it's a no-brainer for me. Well, I mean, it's my thing with Bowler is his attitude's been stinking too often, anyway. So yeah, I, th- I suppose the big thing for me as well is it is is difficult now because obviously we we're gonna stay up. Playoffs are gone, pretty much. But we just don't want the season to peak, to peter out. So we've got to be careful in the sense that, you know, we still got some difficult games to go. Next um, game, Sunderland at home. Yeah, so we've still got Sunderland. We've got Coventry, Hull, Birmingham, Millwall, Southampton, Middlesbrough, Rotherham. So, you know, there's still some difficult fixtures there. So, you know, it's just, we just like to finish the season strong. We don't want to be losing... The majority of them do you know what i mean and just yeah so what about out. this though though what about this for an argument to that then say we played right sunderland is their uh, home in it yeah is that right so i what if we played this team right we play however earth and goal s brand phillips you know back five as it is then in the midfield you have to start with Syopis and rules on the right you go tanner colwell in the middle graham Odauda and then Grant as the number nine. But then on the bench, you have um, Joel Ashford. So Joel would come on for maybe either Cyprus or Rolls. Ashford comes on for either, could come on for Tanner and then put Grant on the right, or Ashford could play off the right. You could have, you could even put Joel Colwell on for his brother in the 10. Um, that could inject a bit of ex- excitement into a season which might pitter out seeing the yeah. youngsters but also playing 
Just think, just a slightly I, I more attacking eleven anyway, if that makes yeah. sense. And I think the the crowd would buy into that a lot more as well around uh, the Cardiff City Stadium. I think they'd, you know, they love seeing homegrown players out on the field, and you know, they they'll support them. And obviously, I think it'd be better to do it at a home game rather than away, just to give that extra bit of confidence from the support that they would get from the crowd. It's like I said the other week, wasn't it, mate? Like the manager has an opportunity with every home game to get the crowd up before the game even starts by his the team he names because if yeah. we know, we know what his general team is it's like solid and then he's got like grant and bowler as the wingers and if you if you go to it like if you're with your boy mate and you're getting ready you know getting some food or something at the stadium getting ready for kickoff and the and the starting lineup comes through and you've got tanner in there and you've got say you've got like um turnbulls alongside side office you're like oh hello and grants through the middle and you're like oh oh dowder as well so like you're excited before the game's even yeah. started so yeah. that's what i mean like and then you see the youngsters on the bench and you're like oh here we go like home we're gonna have a go yeah. and i think like why not like just at home have a go yeah um but then ramsey's gonna want to play because he's want to go to you know he's going to want to get fit for the euro to touch wood if wales were to get there so yeah I mean, then again i'm not 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 knocking ramsey at all right but mm. he's got to earn and this, this is sound silly now because of obviously what he's done and stuff but he's got to he got to earn the right to be in that squad we can't just put him in there for the sake of that we want to try and get him fit for wales oh i which, agree mate but we we pay his wages at the end of the day but the exactly. fact is, mate, he's Wales captain. If Wales get to the Euros, they want him fit. He's going to want to be fit. But I saw someone yesterday say um, that Aaron Ramsey isn't our best player when he's fully fit. Which I was like, that was mind-blowing to me, mate. Because I consider Aaron Ramsey to be literally, if it wasn't for his injuries, he would have been up there in like the top 10 midfielders in Europe for the last... 15 years like that's yeah. how good i think he is but obviously injuries that leg break derailed his career and now as he's getting older he's picking up those sort of those injuries that a lot of aging players get unfortunately and he's always been like that picking up um those injuries primarily because of that leg break he's never yeah. quite been able to get it like too many seasons where he's completely injury free but where do you? Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Um, where do you stand on Ruben getting a Wales call up? Like, do you think he deserved that? Do you think he's a bit fortunate? Is it just because he plays for Cardiff? Like, do you think that place is warranted in the Wales squad? Hundred percent, I think. Yeah, he's like I said, he's got something about Dimmy and his performances for Cardiff over the last um, few games, then or a couple of months, then of of warranted his call up. Really, I think. It, we're not in the position like England are really, where we got that strength and depth that we really. So no, I think no, no. you know, rewarding players for for good things and what you've done, then yeah, all for it. Good luck to the kid. Do you um, you think there's any chance that he starts, uh, well, like where Ramsey would start, or do you think that's more likely to go to another players like you got Harry Wilson and people like that? Yeah, I would imagine so. We'll go probably to the more experienced. And you think there. so, wouldn't you? It's a good option off the bench, though, mate. I tell you that. Yeah. Like he's, yeah. and sometimes players find it difficult, don't they, coming off the bench to find the pace of the game. The one thing with him is, apart from he's in good form, is that he is used to coming off the bench and making an impact. And you know, come Thursday, we might need that, mate. We might need that. Yeah. Um, we're going to chuck some. We're going to do some Wales content on the channel this week as well. Um, not 100 percent like what's what and stuff. What's sure? Are you going to the? Where's? Um... No, I'm not going to the. I haven't gone to many. I think I've only taken Josh to one. To be honest, I don't know. I might. Um, might. Might. It's on Thursday, you know. Might. Um, I might speak to Rodders and see about doing like combining like a bit of a. A watch along and a and the roger gig show kind of all into one because i think do you know what's off top of your head do you know what time the wales game kicks off 
No idea, but no idea. I would imagine if he's on a Thursday, it's going to be a quarter to eight, eight o'clock, I would imagine. Yeah, Wales, Finland, quarter to eight. So what I'm thinking is maybe from 7 till 7.45, we do Roger Gig show, and I'll stream it on Cardiff City World and on um, the main channel. And then and then at quarter to eight, some like you, yourself, Rob, whoever really wants to join, we'll just have a bit of a watch along for the Wales game, like, but um i don't know we're just uh we're just thinking i'll do a well we'll definitely do a wales preview on cardiff city world on wednesday um we'll have cardiff city content through the week hoping that terry phillips will be back soon he's been unwell um best wishes to him um and hopefully he'll be fighting fit and, and raring to go um got some ideas for some content in the international break but if there is any uh, like Cardiff related content that you'd like to see in the international break, um, got a few videos coming. Like we're going to do um, uh, kind of look at the squad, rate their season, and if you'd keep them or get rid, like sell. A um, few things like that. A couple of scout reports, quizzes. Yeah, we're going to do some stuff. Um, and and, and, and oh, I should say, as always, we're looking for more city fans to get involved. It's a fan channel by fans for fans. So I love doing it since I, since you've since me and like Rob have come in and it's it's brilliant. I love doing it. Yeah, and that's the thing is I want like I'd like to get some more like I got ideas for for content and for shows for the channel, but I need more people on board yeah, to yeah. do it if that makes sense. Um, but once we get some more people in, um, we'll have some analysis videos. We'll have. <coughs> some quizzes i would like to do a championship fan show as well i don't know whether that would be on this channel or the other channel but but like where we get different fans from different clubs each week um you know just doing sort of you know different different just previewing or looking at the week and stuff I'd like to vary it up a little bit and do different things but mix it wait, up what, yeah that's it mate i gotta say the one good thing is that Cardiff City World only been going like a few weeks really is it's growing like each week is is growing and it's just getting people to know it's there and and Cardiff City content seven days a week um last week was a, a bit mad like we um obviously had two interviews a day with ex-players as we built up for the the old South Wales derby which would end you're gonna have to do that every week now so you're gonna have to uh like for the Sunderland game now you're gonna have to get chopper on the phone and Fuck all sorts of bad things i was <laughs> so busy last week it was ridiculous mate back up back up again the divorce papers written up oh, mate, you know <laughs> like it was it was a long week mate um yeah. and i think not to play you but i don't think people appreciate uh, you know what goes on behind scenes they see these 15 20 minute videos but those 15 20 minute videos for you was probably i don't know three four five maybe longer i was yeah, trying to it's, uh, well it's sort it obviously you've got to sort it out get in touch with people and then you've got to set it up do the link and that do it and then you've got to edit it and then you've got to re-upload it and it just it takes forever mate so imagine doing two of them a day um but fair play <laughs> big, big, big shout out to to kev and ernie and all those guys like oh, how good was it there. to see kev how good going I, obviously i watched them all but it was so good to see him back on the screen talking with you and um in a good place like it was you know really good obviously going back to the days where he was a regular on his podcast nation with you um i was just so good to sit to see him and i know we've had his difficulties and stuff but just good to see him in a good place and you know Hopefully, he'll be back soon. Yeah, and I think um, he's just very, very busy. Like, so it's just trying to find that time and stuff. But it was good. It was also, we done that really, really early in the morning. So he was like half asleep. But um, I tell well, you, not eight really, o'clock on a Sunday morning, or was it? No, no it was not. <laughs> um, but do you know what else, mate? Is it was, um, I thought Ernie was really, really good. Um, and I think like a few people had said when he was on Ace Podcast Nation that he was a bit quiet and that. But actually, I think 
he was in the process of getting ready to join Sky and stuff. So I think he was just not not reserved, but just a bit more. I don't know what what, what you'd say, like just wary or whatever. I don't know. And obviously, we, in the weeks before that, we'd had people, players, who were a bit more free, free talking in some of the stories they were telling. But I thought Ernie was wicked. Like he, I really enjoyed speaking to him, and I'm sure um, being a, the city legend that he is, we'll um, you know, we'll see him soon at some point, isn't it? I'm sure. Happy days. Um, if you haven't got your tickets already, get them for Willie Boland, 10th of May, Rose and Crown in Pont de Prix. You can't be um, any less, can it? No, I don't think there is many, mate. But, you know. Big good night out. Like, I'm looking forward to that. Give them a push until they're gone. Um, but, yeah, it's just what it's like. Willie's really. Like, even speaking to Willie last week, that was cool as well. Like, he hasn't been on this channel and he hasn't been on Ace for ages. So, like, to have him on and, and chat to him and Roger Gibbons. I got a full podcast coming out with Roger soon, which is it's a really good one, actually. Like, I knew it was going to be decent, but we um, we went into some detail about uh, some of the work he did after football with them, um, with like young players and stuff. And he tells some stories, mind, and uh, that's a really good one. That's coming should be out now in the next couple of weeks. So, um, and if you haven't already, make sure you check out uh, the podcast which dropped on Ace Podcast Nation last night with the godfather of the Welsh hip hop scene, uh, 40. Uh, it's a really good one. It's like, he's got a mad story, been through a lot, ups and downs. He's got some wicked stories and uh, it's a really good one. And then tonight, Tony Rivers, Cardiff City fan, author, uh, is on Ace Podcast Nation, seven o'clock, that podcast is a belter. It is a belter. Um, so lots and lots of content coming tonight at Straight after the Tony Rivers pod podcast on Ace Podcast Nation, I will be on Cardiff City World doing five things we learned about yesterday. Uh, that's going to be positive. Um, tomorrow, Cardiff City phone in and the vlog from the girls. Uh, Bluebirds, everywhere we go vlog. That'll be out in the morning. And I know they've got some celebrities on there. At least one, at least and uh, I've heard it's a very good one. So um, despite the results, lots of good content coming for Cardiff City fans. This was the Cardiff City World Breakfast Show. Maybe we should do this every day, Matt. Breakfast show, isn't it? Yeah, after I take my kids to school, before I start their work, is it? Yeah, you can fit it in. We'll just do it at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock in the morning, breakfast show. <laughs> the early no, breakfast. Not, not early risers like you, but... The early breakfast, baby. Okay, no, uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Enjoyed Just it. Wish mate. it was uh, on more positive uh, yeah. things, really. But it is what it is. I think one of the positives is now they only scored two goals in the end. It could have been about six, really. Right. See the Ipswich result yesterday against Sheffield Wednesday. I haven't seen no results from yesterday. Ipswich beat Sheffield Wednesday six nil. No Ugbo goal then. No, Kiefer Moore didn't score either. Did he not? In a 6 0 victory. I know. It's a bit mad. Happy days. Ipswich are good, mate. Um, that that puts the cat amongst the pigeons for the relegation because um Chef of Wednesday looked like they were cooking a little bit mm -hmm. in recent weeks. I think they've lost two on the bounce now. So yeah. Plenty to play for, mate. And I think Cardiff could have a bit of fun this uh going forward now. If they're <clears throat> You know, they just got to get a like the fans are disappointed now, mate. Didn't it? Just to finish off, the fans are disappointed. That last yesterday was painful, and I think the best way for the club to get the fans back on side and get everyone kind of happy is involve the youngsters and for the home games, just go all out attack and just yeah. get stuck in. The problem you'll have is everyone will go, "Why didn't they do that against Swansea?" But yeah. Sometimes just, it's not as easy as for that, me, right? and I know we're going back a little bit now. Though it's just, yeah. I don't think I'm not convinced he's got a plan B and a plan C. I just, I don't think he's able to change things up enough. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's not that he's got a plan B. I but think what gonna... I would say is we've got plan A now. And no, I think um, well, the, one of the problems, mate, is the rotations. I think he doesn't know his best team, and I yeah. think that does. 
um, that does cause a bit of an issue because he never quite knows what he's going to do until he does it in terms of picking the 11. Like, I get why he stuck with that 11 this week. I just wouldn't have done it. If that, does that make no. sense? Like, yeah. I just thought it was, it was, and I thought it was quite obvious that that wasn't the way to go. Like, and that, and I thought he kind of was thinking the same thing because I thought he'd rested roles for the, for the derby, like, you know? Yeah. So that was weird to me because I just couldn't understand why he rested him and then didn't play him at all. Unless he's, you know, unless he's, maybe he's carrying an injury, mate. I don't know. Just infuriating. But it is what it is, mate. We've got to suck it up just like they had to suck it up uh, earlier in the season. Yeah. It's just one of them. Painful, brutal, embarrassing all those objectives but what i can say is that i will be back tonight probably around quarter past eight for five things we've learned there's going to be a, a challenge i think but um do you know i just look at, i'm just doing the image for it now right and the, the title on the image last week was best performance of the season question mark i think i'm just going to change it to <laughs> worst, worst performance of the season I don't think that's wrong, is it? Like, it was fucking awful. Yeah, it is. Ah, but there you go. Um, Matt, as always, mate, it's a pleasure. I think, is this the first yeah. show we've done together? I think it is, mate, yeah. I think it is. Ah, there you are. Yeah, also, it's been, uh, been down to the ones that you've done down the Rama Tavern and stuff, but I think um, this is the official first one, I think. Yeah, I invaded your, um, your flower hour, didn't I, the other week? Oh, he's, uh, he's a grabbing bugger, and he's picked up all the time today, Rob. So, um, yeah. He wants his money, did not he? Yeah. He our our boys' football game. games were called off on Friday. So, uh, yeah, fair play to him. Right, if mate, he can earn a good quid. Then, grassroots yeah. football, football has been shocking this, this year. Oh, but, yeah. There's so many just, games called uh, off. It's just unreal, mate. Artificial pitches need to be made available, don't they? But well, you go up, up, up north, mate. If you go up to like Manchester and now they play the majority of their games, men's down to kids on 3G pitches because yeah. they know they live in Manchester and it rains. Yeah. You know, we live in Wales, like, <laughs> but it's the same as, um, do you know, it's the same though as with like not just the pitches, but also they'd start the season so late. Like, we're training, like, we'll be doing like pre season training and the goals are up and the nets are up, and you're like, well, why aren't we playing games now? Yeah. And they say it's because of you know basketball or uh, not basketball, baseball or whatever. But Frickin I never see bloody baseball matches on. You know, it's no. frustrating. But because they cause their own problems. Worst performance of the season: five things we learned from Card City versus Swansea Town tonight. I shall see you about, later. About quarter past eight. Nice one, guys. See you later. Not a fly.